Good evening, Church on the Go. Welcome back to another Church on the Go live stream right here in Newmarket, Ontario. It's just after 6.30 Eastern Time, and we hope that you are uh, blessed in the Lord. Um, uh, we are uh, going to worship the Lord for a little bit, then we're going to study the Word of God together. Uh, you'll hear the air conditioning working hard to keep us cool in here. That buzz in the background is a sign that it's cool to be at Church on the Go. Praise God. And uh, so um, we are grateful for air conditioning. And, um, and you'll uh, see all the, district, the links in the description. So if you want to follow any of the lyrics on your own screen, if you want to do a split screen on your tablet or your device, you can always click on one of the links in the description of this video and check it out on a second screen. Or you can read it off our screen here. Uh, we also have a graphics link that will take you to our um, that will take you to our teaching graphics. So there's two links: one for lyrics, one for graphics, and then uh, you can follow along with us. Um, also, we will have a YouTube version of this live stream that'll come up in the next few days for anyone who's not on Facebook. So you can share it about, tell all your friends. So uh, let's pray, Father. I just thank you, Lord, that you are the God of the universe. Yes, you are still in control. No matter what happens in this world, King Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. There's nothing that anybody can do to dethrone Jesus. Right on. The devil is powerless. Yes. The world governments are powerless. Yes, Nobody can take our throat, God off the throne. Amen. Jesus is forever seated in the heavenly place. Yes, he is the King of kings, Lord of lords. Amen. All authority flows from him, through him, down to the earth. Uh, and beyond, Lord, and there's nothing, there is no authority except from God. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we recognize the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We recognize you as the sovereign, and we recognize you as the compassionate one who had mercy and compassion on the broken and the lost, the sinner, the, uh, the demon possessed, those that were uh, downtrodden. Lord, you set the oppressive, oppressed free. You yes, set Lord. them free, Lord, and you delivered them all by the blood of the Lamb, by yes, your our own sacrifice on the cross. So we thank you, Jesus. We ask that you now just lead us, guide us, um, bless the service. Let it be for your glory, Lord. And that those that are watching, both uh, locally and abroad, across the world, I pray that they would be blessed as they watch this tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's preach the kingdom. Amen. The song I wrote uh, about 10 years ago, actually, last month. It would have been 10, 10 years. And uh, based on Matthew 10 and 7 and Matthew 12, 28, we're singing the words of Jesus. Amen. He was preaching uh, that we should be preaching the kingdom. Amen. That's what we're told to preach. Preach right. the kingdom of heaven, preach the kingdom of God. So Amen. let's worship him together. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jesus. We revere the man, Christ Amen. Jesus. He is the man and the king and the God. Amen. And we don't serve anyone but him. Right he is the high, high kingdom over all. Hallelujah. And he is the way to the city. Yes. Did you know that? Amen. You know, we are talking about the man, the book, and the city. Right. And what is the city? What city should we be looking at? The heavenly one. Is your head, is your mind heavenly set? Amen. Are you set on the heavenly things? New Jerusalem. This is a great Michael Card song, and uh, I encourage you to sing along with us uh, because that's hope. Amen. If you're getting discouraged or depressed by what you're seeing in the news, look to heaven. Amen. This is what lasts forever, right. not what's going on right now. Amen. Praise God. So let's sing together. Amen. Amen. This is this is a dis determination. I'm determining to worship the Lord and to sing His songs. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship God with the song, New Jerusalem. <laughs>
Sometimes I don't like to go in the right order. I don't know why. You number them and they still don't. <laughs> Technology. Praise God. All right. Let's worship the Lord. One more song. Did you know that the written word should lead you to the living word? Yes. Jesus Christ. You know, don't be like the Pharisees that stuck their nose in the book but never saw the man. Right. They and stopped short. And they, Jesus said, you think you have salvation in the scriptures, but they talk of me. Right. Amen. Amen. And so that's the, the man in the book in the city. So the book leads us to the man, the living word, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Who's leading us to the city. So let's worship him together. He's so worthy, worthy, worthy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. Well, praise God. Welcome to September. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I would have thunk it, right? Amen. So, Jesus from sea to sea. You can see the same graphic on both the screens. And that's our one of our hashtags. We also have a rise from sea to sea. And uh, the man, the book, and the city. Uh, all these are hashtags that are uh, connected to our Facebook site. And in September, we have uh, First Nations uh, emphasis with one of our dear brothers that's been here with us a number of times. And uh, he's an Ojibwe uh, chief as well as a pastor. And uh, he'll be back with us sharing what's been going on in the reserves this summer with his camps and great right. things he's been doing. Amen. And uh, as he comes, uh, we give, take up missions offerings uh, to support him. And I tell him every time, uh, I'm commissioning you to go out on our behalf. And, uh, and so we support him and send him forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, of course, uh, you'll see there that uh, we have different things going on. Uh, my father is blessed to be turning 90 this uh, yeah. next week. That's so, amazing, uh, on 12th, right? Yeah. yeah. That's so amazing. We're Praise looking God. forward to that. Of course, Brother Joe. And uh, one slight change is that Brother Chris and Sister Marco will be deferred to the end of October. So uh, they've asked to, to be coming at the end of October. Now, our calendar does say that it's subject to change. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah, they called after I published it. So, yep. <laughs> so that's the way it goes sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah, can't ever know. You yeah. never know for sure. Okay. Amen. So we'll just go uh, think right on to the uh, man, the book, and the city. That's right. You see some of the hashtags here as we've been talking about uh, Arise from Sea to Sea, Jesus from Sea to Sea. We also have a hashtag, the man, the book, and the city. That's not on that uh, on that screen, but uh, praise God. So tonight we want to talk about the, the, the big reveal. You know, you watch some shows and they say, you know, we're going to reveal to you a, a very special announcement or a very special person. And then they don't tell you who that is or what the announcement is. They say, uh, right after this, don't go anywhere, right? <laughs> right. These messages? <laughs> we'll be right or, back. <laughs> or, or, or Paul Harvey used to say, you know, uh, if you want to know the rest of the story, then uh, stay tuned and I'll tell you the rest of the story, right? So the big reveal, we're talking about the God man. We've been talking about the man, the book, and the city, right? Right on. And... Um, you know, we have a lot of Christians today that get uh, wrapped up in theological debates. And uh, particularly in the whole futurist camp, they get going on about uh, are you uh, pre-trip or post-trip or this and that. Mid-trip. Yeah, All yeah. trips. <laughs> well, the, the, tonight uh, we want to encourage you to ask yourself the question, how many Christians really know about the pre-incarnation or the post-incarnation? Incarnation of Christ. Right. Pre incarnated Christ and pre post. Yeah. Pre and post. Yeah. yeah. Incarnation of Christ. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And uh, of course, the pre incarnation of Christ, uh, Jesus appeared in the Old Testament. It's referred to as a Christophany, an Old Testament appearance of Christ, or a Theophany, which is an Old Testament appearance of God, right? The word Theo being Greek for uh, God, and we get the word theology and theophany, etc. So we have some questions that we want to ask ourselves tonight. Do you want to know the mystery of all time? Right. Do you want to know the mystery of all time? A big question. Yesterday, today, and forever. Some people will go like this, oh, that sounds great, but I'll, I'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah, well, here's the interesting thing. Jesus Christ is the same. Yes. Yesterday, today, today, and forever. forever. Hebrews 13 and 8. Yes. Right. So, um, do we want to know the mystery of all time? Do you want to know the differences of Christ Jesus in the Old and New Testament? You see, we have a lot of uh, pseudo uh, cults out there, pseudo Christian cults, that, uh, you know, they kind of try to act kind of Christian like. 
But uh, yeah, they don't even believe that Jesus is the man, Christ Jesus. They they, they think he's a, an angel or they think he's he's a created a, being of some kind. Yeah, yeah. They always demote Jesus in their religion. Yeah. It's yeah. a false religion because they always demote Jesus somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And we need to know how to, to speak. And so particularly those who think he's an angel. You know, I've got a lot of people today who talk about angels and so yes. on. Uh, you need to tell people, listen, if you think Jesus is an angel, you're stuck in the Old Testament. Right. Okay? Because Jesus is the Son of Man, right? Right. And we'll get into that in a yes. moment. Right. That's praise powerful. God. That's powerful. So, uh, praise God. First of all, we want to go to John chapter 14. And in this passage, Jesus is talking about manifesting himself. We're talking about the big reveal, right? The word... To manifest means to reveal, right? The big reveal is Jesus manifesting himself to us. And that's what we want. Is we want the big reveal. We want Jesus to manifest himself to us, right. who he really is. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So John 14, and we're reading from 9 to 21. All right, let's go to the Gospel of John. Yes. Chapter 14, and we're going from where? 9, verse 9. 9. To 21. 9 to 21, okay. So, John 14, 9 to 21. I mean, you want to break in half, you can pause and we can... Well, uh, there's a lot there, I'm sure. If you have any sure. comments, and then... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, if you want to read down to 15 or 16... And okay, pause, let's, start, let's do that. So, do that. John 14, 9 yeah. says, read along with us, Jesus said to him... Talking huh? about Philip. Right? Philip, yeah. yeah. Have I been with you so long, talking Philip, and yet you have not known me, Philip? Because he just asked us, Lord, show us the Father. Yeah, yeah, right. And Jesus is asking him a question now. Yeah, yeah. Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? Right. Ha he who has seen me has seen the Father. Can't get any clearer. No, absolutely. So how can you say, show us the Father? Right. Hello. <laughs> Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Right. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. In other words, Jesus wasn't all talk. Yeah, well, yeah, the signs, the wonders, and miracles, right? Believe yeah. me at least for the works themselves. Yeah, in other words, Jesus didn't all talk. Right. He did right. the works, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not what he said, it's what he does. He did it, too. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't just say it, he did it. Yeah. So, believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, uh, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he will do because i go to my father uh the greater works could be the volume of works because of the corporate body of christ right around the world right so uh, multiple healings of yeah, the blind yeah. or healing of the lame yeah, yeah. raising the dead right or That's, even salvations yes right. salvations absolutely yeah. Yeah. or healings that no one's ever heard of before right, right. god can do anything yeah. Yeah. so um uh i go to my father uh, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. So we want to take a break there yeah, and yeah, just break yeah, it down? I mean, it's pretty simple, you know. It's, again, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Right. Keep my commandments. Right. If you love me, follow me. Yeah. Do what I say. Absolutely. Yeah. And he breaks it down really easy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Yeah. And love your neighbor the way you love yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. He doesn't Absolutely. make it burdensome. Love yeah. fulfills the law. Amen. Right. Amen. So, um, if you, yeah, really, Jesus is revealing his identity. Yeah. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Yes. Powerful. Amen. Man, carry on there. Chris. Okay, yeah. so 16 to 21 now. Yeah. Uh, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Well, how long is forever? Yes. A long time. Yes. The and, and the helper, of course, is the Spirit. Yep. Because he's talking about the Spirit. Yeah, he will tell sense. you right here. Yeah. Verse 17, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, 
and he, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Uh, I, a little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now that is powerful. Manifest. Yes, manifest. The big reveal. Yes, the big reveal. Amen. If you love him and follow his commandments, he will reveal himself or manifest himself to us. Right. And that's what we need is the absolute manifestation of who Christ is. Christ right. is the God-man, the Son of Man, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. No angel died for you. Nope. It was the Son of Man who died as the Lamb of God. Yeah, he gave his flesh and blood. Right. He shed his blood. In fact, if I, I challenged the folks this morning. I said, if you can find an angel in the scriptures who shed blood, show me. Show me where it is, yeah. <laughs> That's a good quiz question. A good head scratcher. Yeah. <laughs> so the next time someone tells you Jesus is an angel, right. just tell them where in the Bible the an angel sheds blood. Right. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 Very good. Now, in the Old Testament, there is a phrase that appears a number of times. Now, I'm not sure how much of it we'll get to look into it tonight. But uh, a number of times the phrase, the angel of the Lord. There is also the phrase, the angel of God, that appears many times in the Old Testament. Now, particularly the angel of the Lord phrase refers to a, a Christophany in the Old Testament. When it says an angel of God, it could have been one of the other angels. But, uh, you know, or it might have been Jesus who also showed up. I don't know. But, could be. But, uh, but particularly the phrase where it says, angel of the Lord. So we are going to go, before we get to that, we're going to go back to um, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 1, and, and read how the Word became flesh, right? Like we said, no angel shed his blood for us. Right. We were celebrating the table of the Lord this morning. And I said, no angel died for me, no angel died for you. Right. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. That's right. So in John's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning in verse 10 to 14. Okay, so John 1, 10 to 14, follow along with us. It says, and he was in the world. This is the word. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he was in the world. The world was made through him. And the world did not know him. Right. Imagine not being recognized and you made everything, you yeah, show up, they, and nobody recognizes yeah, you. Yeah, and they, they don't understand spiritual things. No! No, imagine that. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Okay, so the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Amen. Whoa. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's awesome. That's awesome stuff right there. The, the Word became flesh. Not an angel. Right. He's the Son of Man. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin. Yeah, God incarnate. Absolutely. Christ incarnate. Yeah, I, absolutely. So pre-incarnate, post-incarnate. Right. Do you know the difference, right? Pre-incarnate, what was Jesus doing in the Old Testament? Jesus was revealing himself, but he was revealing himself or interjecting himself into history at different times, but as the angel of the Lord or in different uh ways of manifestations yeah. of himself. Yeah, like even Abraham served three men. Yeah. So there yeah. could have been Jesus and two angels. We don't know. Yeah, we, yeah, we right. don't know. We don't, we don't know. Yeah. But they, these clearly these beings showed up, but they weren't, they didn't become flesh. Right. They weren't the same right. thing. Let's just read on a few more verses there, Curtis. Verse 15 to 18. Yeah. Uh, 15 to 18 yeah. says, So John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, this was he 
of whom I said, he comes after me. He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of the, now that's interesting because John is, of course, born before Jesus was. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was physically flesh. born before Jesus, but Jesus was before him He's because, a pre, because he was the everlasting word. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a fascinating statement to yeah, hear yeah, his absolutely. older cousin saying yeah, this yeah, absolutely. about the living word. So, um, uh, so then he says, and of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Uh, how far am I going? Verse 18. Maybe 18. And no one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Right. So right. only Jesus can declare the Father. Right. Nobody else really can. Nope. So, no. so there we have uh, the Word becoming flesh. Now, in the Old Testament, as I've already said, we have this phrase, the angel of the Lord appears quite a number of times. And uh, we're going to look at a passage um, in chapter uh, 16 of Genesis. This is um, the story of, uh, it starts off with a lot of flesh. A lot of flesh involved here because uh, Sarah uh, gets discouraged and tells Abraham, you know, well, why don't you go in and take my handmaiden who was Egyptian, you know, which Take was her. the wrong thing to do. She later admits her her mistake. Uh, <laughs> but then she says, uh, well, um, God will have to decide that between you and me. <laughs> not, exactly, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not exactly owning up to it. No, 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 that's right. So uh, we'll read the, the, the first six verses there, uh, Curtis, and, and pause. And uh, here we see that there's a lot of uh, works of the flesh and a lot of lack of faith being uh, expressed here. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Amen. So where are we here? Uh, Genesis? Genesis 16, 1 to 6. To okay, start Genesis with. 16, 1 to 6. Yeah. Okay. So now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarah. He <laughs> didn't resist. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what a mess this is. Yeah. Sure. Well, uh, you know, everyone has their part in this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then Sarah, Abram's wife, uh... Abram's wife took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Uh, then Sarah said to Abram, My wrong be upon you! <laughs> oh my gosh. Really? Really, woman? <laughs> my wrong be upon you! I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, yeah. uh, I became despised in her it's eyes. It's a typical story. And the Lord judged between you gets, and me. It, it, it's a typical story. If anybody gets any power, it goes straight to their brain cells. Yeah. And that's what happened with Hagar. Hagar. Suddenly she realized, well, I'm conceiving, and Sarai is not. So now I'm so, better. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. got the superiority complex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great. But it was Sarah's idea to begin with. <laughs> but Abraham didn't really resent it. No, no. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> Get it together. I mean, it's human nature. It is. We see. It's a lot of human nature yeah, going yeah, on here. Because yeah, yeah. God had already given them the promise that, yes, Abraham and Sarah would conceive. Right, right. But they're trying to solve it themselves. Right. right. And they make it worse. Exactly. All right, next. Verse 6. Just so verse, verse 6. six. So Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. But when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Okay, so the bottom line is that uh, Abraham was a wimp. Yeah. He said, I'm not having anything to do with it. <laughs> you can deal with her however you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So wow. Now all of this has happened that brings us up to verse 7. Okay, now, in the beginning of verse 7, 
going on to 16, we have the angel of the Lord. It says, uses this phrase, the angel of the Lord. And it gives us quite a few references in our, in our Bible here. It, it, it makes the point that the, there are quite a few references where the phrase, the angel of the Lord, appears, right? And, um, and in our Bible, because uh, Curtis and I are both using the New King James here, the word Lord is capitalized. Yeah. And so when it's capitalized, it's like Jehovah God. So, like Jesus is called, his name means Jehovah is salvation, right? Yes, so Jehovah it's salvation. almost like saying the angel of Jehovah. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right? Yes. So, I believe quite strongly this is a Christophany here. Mm -hmm. This is an Old Testament appearance of Christ. Yes. So, it's a, like a physical representation, right. but without flesh and blood. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, in the New Testament, the word becomes flesh. Right. But in the Old Testament, Jesus was still appearing in history and interjecting. And in this case, he comes to the broken. He comes to Hagar. He does. Because she really uh, was uh, kind of thrown I mean, into the crossfire. She you, was thrown into think, the crossfire. You think that the woman at the well in John 4 was the first woman he met at the well? Nope. No, she wasn't the first woman he met at the well. Hagar was the first woman recorded that he meets at the well. Yeah. So here, let's read from verse 6 down to 16. Okay. Yeah. So um, we just read verse 6. So that was she yeah. fled from her presence. Yeah. So now we're in verse 7. Yeah. And read now, down to verse 16. Okay. So follow along with us. We're still in Genesis 16. Yeah. Read verse 7 with us. Now, the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water. They're there, woman at the well. Yeah. A spring of water in the wilderness by the spring on the way to shore. And he said, and that's interesting, that's a capital H, he yeah, said. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, like I said, it's, like a, it's an Old Testament. Christophany. Christophany. Show of God, yeah. an appearance of Christ. Yeah. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? I think I think he asked her more for her benefit. Well, it's leading by questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And she said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord, it's appearing every, every, every verse is beginning with the angel yeah, of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So, and the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man, and his hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the name of the Lord um, who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. Uh, which I guess has an... Uh, El Roy. El Shaddai. Is, no, it's, El Roy? Yeah, El Verse 13, Roy. Yeah, El Roy. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. It's in the footnotes. Yeah, no, right. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. The God who sees. For she said, have I also here seen him who sees me? Right. That's past the yeah. Great question. Therefore, the well was called Bir Leha Roy. Yes. The, observe, it is between Kedesh and Birith. So, Hagar bore Abram a son. And Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Right. Okay. So, you know, if, you if you're 86 and you think that you're <laughs> out of commission, Jesus uh, uh, is appearing here in this situation as the angel of the Lord because Abram is bringing forth the son. And he's at the well, and in the, the margin here in verse 14, the, it's, it literally means... The well of one who lives and sees me. Right. So, I mean, the well is named after the angel of the Lord. Yeah, which is really Jesus in yeah. this case. Yeah. It's an Old Testament. Old Testament appearance. Christophany. Christophany, right? yeah. Uh, praise God. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. That's um, awesome. So, uh, the angel of the Lord, uh, there are other uh, phrases where it comes up as an angel of God, which is open for discussion whether that's another angel. For example, in chapter 21, I think it's in verse 11, uh, and this is another uh, passage, I believe, concerning uh, Sarah and Hagar. 
Um, okay, uh, so in verse 9 it starts off with Sarah, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian whom she had born to Abraham, scoffing. So she's scoffing, you know, and so on. Because um, Isaac was just weaned. Isaac right, was just a little right. one. Uh, so let's see here. Um, so in... in uh, Ishmael was scoffing. Right. Yeah, the son of Hagar was a scoffing. Okay, so uh, then in verse 17, uh, it says the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, right? So that phrase, the angel of God, uh, let's just see, we have a cross reference there. Um, Where are we? Verse in verse 17, the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven. Okay, yep. Yeah. What ails you, Hagar? So whether that was Jesus or not, uh, that's open for discussion, right? Yeah, the, the angel, angel of God. The angel of God. It could have been any angel that was sent from the Lord. Right? Yep, could have been. But it, it also could have been, I think if it was the angel of the Lord, it probably would have called it, used that phrase. Sure, it's a different yeah. phrase here. Yes. Yep. Um, let's go over to... Um, uh, chapter 22, and in chapter 22 we have the story of uh, the testing of uh, Abraham, and uh, uh, when we um, come down to verse 11 of uh, chapter 22, the angel of the Lord calls Abraham, stops him from killing his son Isaac. Right? Yeah, he says, Abraham, Abraham. So, yep. so, verse 11, why don't you carry on there? Read from verse 11, um, Curtis, down to 19. Maybe. Okay, yep. So, we're in verse chapter Genesis 22, right. verses 11 to 19. Right. Read along with us. It says, But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, and again, capital H, he, angel of the Lord. Yes. yes. So this is the New King James that's capitalizing this. That's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So he said to him, do not lay your hand on the lad, nor do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Capital M, me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And the, Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. Now in the old King James, it's Jehovah Jireh. Right, which 14. Is the Lord, which will provide. Yeah. Right. Jehovah Jireh, yeah. Right. Our provider. So as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and you have not without your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand on which is on the seashore, which your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemy, and that your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Right. Yeah. So the phrase, the angel of the Lord, which refers to a Christophany here, yes. uh, is used twice in this passage from verses 11 to 19 of uh, Genesis 22. And in the second one, he is blessing Abraham, and he uses two phrases, when he or two words, when he's talking about the blessing. He said that you will be multiplied as the stars of the heaven and as the sand of the sea. This refers to spiritual and natural blessings. The sand refers to the natural, and the stars refers to the spiritual. Daniel uses the phrase, that uh, the, the saints will be blessed as the stars of heaven. And in Revelation chapter 1, Jesus held the seven stars in his hand, which were the angels of the, or the pastors, uh, yeah. depending on how you translate it. Because they say, mess, you know, because it could of be the messengers. seven churches, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So the stars refer to spiritual blessings, 
And the sand refers to natural blessings. So right. the blessing is both natural and spiritual. You can't get the spiritual blessings without having the natural blessings. Right, right. Because, you, you know, you can't be born again until you're born naturally. Physically, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. gotta be flesh and blood first. I mean, Jesus couldn't be called the Son of Man until he, the Word became flesh. Right. He couldn't appear as a, a Christophany right. in order to accomplish that. Well, yeah, no. As a Christophany, he was referred to as the angel of the Lord. Right. That's not flesh and blood. Right. So, uh, coming back to our initial question is, a lot of Christians don't know the, uh, the difference between the pre-incarnation Christ and the post-incarnation Christ. Right. They want to debate about are you pre-trip or post-trip, but they don't want to talk about or understand the importance of the pre- If you come across these people who are involved in pseudo-Christian cults, and they say, oh, he's just an angel. Well, they own, they're, they're not totally wrong. They're incomplete. They only understand the Old Testament concepts yeah. of the Christophany, right. the angel of the Lord. They right. don't understand that he... The Word became flesh. He became the Son of Man, the yeah. Lamb of God that takes away the sin yeah. of the In world. fact, uh, there, the Apostle John, in one of his epistles, tells us how you can identify false doctrine because they will deny that Jesus was came in the flesh. Right, exactly. It says that right in 1 John chapter 4. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, the only way you can be saved is that He came as the Son of Man. He had to come in flesh and blood. Right. To be saved, to save us. Yes. He had to shed sinless blood. Right. That angel, do an angel doesn't have that. Right. Is there anything else you wanted to say about that? Well, no, no. That was that, That's great. Yeah. Right. 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 So, um, you know. Uh, Other than the fact that it's just, I just find it interesting. The New King James capitalizes the M on myself. The angel of the Lord is a capitalized myself. Yes. And he's capitalized H, he. Yeah. So yeah. that just strengthens my uh, the idea that it's a Christophany. So let's just look quickly here at chapter 31 and 32 uh, of Genesis. Now in chapter 31, uh, we have the whole story and this, uh, uh, Jacob is getting revelations from uh, an angel in verse uh, 11. Uh, and it says the angel of God, right, spoke to me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am, right? So then he's telling him how Laban is is, uh, is shafting him with all, all the animals, right? Right. <laughs> and then over in 32, we've got your famous song here that comes out of 32 with the oh, wrestling yes. of the angels. Yes, 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 the overcomer's yes. Yes. and Yes, um, uh, and so there's a man that comes and wrestles with uh, with uh, Jacob, and uh, he doesn't really uh, tell him his, his name, but he blesses Abram. And uh, yeah, you know. Um, now the man it doesn't say that he is the angel of the Lord, but he could be. He could be. Uh, he could be an angel. Well, of clearly, the Lord. it was a physical. It doesn't use angel of God or the angel of the Lord no, no, in, in, no. in this translation. No. It does. Now, perhaps another translation it might uh, do it. Yeah, but, uh, where are we here? Yeah, we're in chapter 32 now. I'm down, down oh, at Oh, yes, uh, a man. 24. A man. It's yeah. capital M. A man. Yeah. But it is capital M. So, therefore, yeah. I, I tend to think it's a Christophany. I tend to think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because why would the translators capitalize uh, the... Yeah, you know? and then, yes, and when you go to look later on, um, he says, uh, verse 30, Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face yes. and my life is preserved. Right, right. That's pretty interesting. Right, amen. So, uh, his name became uh, Israel, which means, uh, in this, he gave him a new name, right? Yes. And, um, uh, and he blessed him, and he gave him a new name. Uh, Trying to find the exact verse where he called him uh, Israel. Um, oh, uh, 28? 28. Your name shall no longer be called yes. Jacob, but right. Israel. Right. For you have struggled with God and with men. And have prevailed. Right. So the, the name Israel means uh, prince with God. Yes. Okay. Now, we are being called in the New Testament. We don't have time to go there, but in Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, also in chapter uh, 5, verses 9 and 10, he calls us kings and priests 
He's making us kings and priests unto our God. Right? Yes, he does. Yep. Now, it's the same principle here because you struggled with God and you have prevailed or you have overcome. This is the New Testament uh, revelation. That's right. Genesis, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. So there's uh, a lot of similarities here that we need to understand that there are spiritual blessings and natural blessings. So in conclusion, because our time is gone, we want to uh, encourage you to think about uh, when you're talking to people who are involved in some sort of uh, understanding or theological uh, idea that Jesus is just an angel, and there's a lot of ideas out there about angels today. Oh, I mean, yes. I hear people thinking that uh, they die and go to heaven and become an angel. Let me tell you, angels are angels, and we are the redeemed. Yeah, right? We are the redeemed. If we're going to heaven, you have to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will Except always... for small children who have not reached the age of accountability, right? Then, then the Lord takes them home. Yeah, that's yeah. His grace. Eh? Yeah, that's grace. Faith. It's all grace and favor. Yeah. Um, but you, you're basically looking at two different eternal beings. Yeah. Angels which are not redeemed. Right. And then you have human spirits which are redeemed. Again, we don't have time to go into the Book of Hebrews. He says, "Did I ever say to any angel that I would help them?" Right. No, that's no, the first it, chapter of Hebrews. Only, yeah, only the 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 uh, the seed of Abraham. Right. That I say that I would redeem. Yeah. So we need to understand that, and uh, of course I'm paraphrasing mm -hmm. by saying mm -hmm. it that way. But mm -hmm. you can read Hebrews chapter one, particularly where it says that. I mean, we can take a moment. It distinguishes perhaps. between angels and the sun. Yeah, and I think we maybe should do that because it brings a little more clarity it's, 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 as we conclude this. Draws I things hadn't together. planned to to do this, but it just uh, seems to it's be a great what the wants, how the Lord wants to wrap this up. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's read. Um, well, Curtis, why don't you read the whole chapter? Okay, here we and go. We'll conclude. Okay. okay, so here we go. 14 verses, Hebrews yeah. chapter 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, Amen. having become so much better than the angels. Hello. Yes. Welcome. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up call. Yeah. Right? Better than the angels. So you say Jesus is an angel? No, he's better than no, the angels. Yeah. He's, he's, not, uh, he's not revealing himself now as an angel, Lord. He has become the Son of Man, the yeah. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Yeah. The Bible says he's better than the yeah. angels. Amen. Hallelujah. So then he has an inheritance, by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Okay, but when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, that okay, firstborn, for he's going to be the firstborn from the dead. Jesus. Right. Yes. And and God knew that from before the, the foundation, foundation of the world. world. That's right. right. The lamb okay. slain. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. he says, uh, uh, when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Right. Jesus is an angel? No, no, the angels worship him. All right, exactly. And Jesus is better than them. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Hallelujah. That'll preach. Amen. Now we go on. Yep. It says, and the angels of, uh, of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. All right. But to the, but, now we have a distinction again. Mm -hmm. But to the sun, the incarnate sun, he right. says, your throne, O God. Oh, he's God. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, he's the God man. He's, he's the, the God throne. man. He's on the throne. Right. So the Son is the God. Right. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, you O Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, 
and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Right. Now there's some great questions in there. Yeah. Rhetorical questions. So hopefully uh, bringing those thoughts together, you will be able to get some clarity there. In the Old Testament, the Christophany or Theophany of Christ appearing as the angel of the Lord. Uh, you know, he couldn't uh, in that form uh, taken away our sins, I no. don't believe, because there was no blood to shed. No, no, no. He needs the flesh form. Yeah. With the, 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 and that's his... the distinction, you see. I, I don't want to go down this too far, but just to kind of give you an understanding, a lot of people who get into the whole thing about evil spirits and trying to compare that to the Holy Spirit. No way. Because evil spirits, they try to take on other living beings like they're parasites. Yeah, they're parasites. They're parasites. That's what possession is. Right. Okay. But Jesus, he never, he took on his own flesh. Right. Right? He didn't take on anybody else's flesh. Nope. The Word became flesh through Mary. Right. right. By the Holy Spirit, the yep. Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And yep. he, with that perfect blood, amen, cleanses us amen. from all sin. Amen. Amen. A miraculous conception. Amen. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So, Amen. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you can help us to bring clarity to people who uh, get uh, all wrapped up with angels and uh, they think uh, Jesus is an angel. Well, they're not totally wrong. In the Old Testament, he did appear as the angel of the Lord, but... Right. It wasn't until the Word became flesh, He became as the Son of Man, as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, that actually we could be saved. Amen. Without the blood of Jesus, no one can be saved. And we thank you, Lord, that your blood is pure blood. There's no sin, there's no stain. We thank you, Lord, that your blood cleanses us from all sin or from all failure. Yes. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the thanks. We pray, Lord, that you bless those watching. Give them a great Labor Day. We thank you, Lord, for the grace and the favor of God as you uh, bless and encourage and strengthen each one for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Yes, Father. So we thank you, Lord, for the clarity of the Word of God, the two-edged sword which divides between soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Lord, it also uh, divides between that which is spirit and that which is flesh. Right. Lord, in this case, Jesus, who had appeared as an angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, he didn't stop there. No. Eventually, he was to come and did come as uh, the perfect, sinless Son of God. Yes, Lord. Who was born of the Virgin Mary yes, Lord. Uh, by the miracle of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, and Lord. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are distinguished as the firstborn, the first begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You, are, you had perfect sinless flesh and sinless blood, which is what had the power to wash away all sins, to, uh, to, clean, to, to forgive us of our sins, because, Lord, you uh, paid for it in full. And the angel of the Lord couldn't do that. No. Only the perfect Son of Man right. in a sinless body of yeah. flesh and blood could do that. So, Lord, yes. we thank you for that powerful, awesome distinction that, Lord, that the angels are the servants, Jesus is the Son of God, right. who is the God-man sitting on the throne. He's exalted yes. forevermore. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Father. And the angels worship you, and we worship you. You are the great one, Lord. We bless you, and just bless all those that have been watching, Lord, and encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank you for watching our teaching on the man, the book, and the city. Right. Jesus is the man. Amen. And the book is the Bible. And he leads us to the, the city, city of God. The New Amen. Jerusalem. So we bless you. We pray you have a great week. And God willing, we hope to see you Thursday night. God bless.